this video is about perianal sensation testing for suspected corda equina syndrome and I've created it because the latest framework for identifying corda equina syndrome suggests that we do perianal sensation testing uh, but not all physios feel confident to do that understandably so hopefully this will improve your confidence to do the test. So corda equina syndrome can cause devastating disability to the affected person, so we need to make sure that we're managing cases of suspected corda equina syndrome well. It's also associated with high levels of litigation, although less so for physiotherapists than for other professions. In primary care, we should aim to manage the risks relating to corda equina syndrome by recognising symptoms early and referring on usually on an emergency basis. So that's what this recent framework aims to help us do, to recognise corda equina syndrome in primary care. And they recommend that we aim to identify any loss of perianal, perineal or genital sensation. And this should include consideration of objective testing. Here's the relevant section highlighted in the red circle below. And you can note on there as well that they do say that if the test is not done objectively the reason should be documented for example if you didn't have a chaperone available. I recently asked via a Twitter poll if you had to test perianal sensation how confident would you feel to do it and the responses reflected conversations which I've had with physiotherapists before in that many of us feel that we're not confident or really not confident to do perianal sensation testing so 80% thereabouts fell within those categories. It was decided when the framework was created that physiotherapists are all competent to test perianal sensation in that if you can test the lumbar dermatomes in the legs you can test the sacral dermatomes around the perianal area. But that doesn't mean that we all feel confident to test perianal sensation. It's not part of traditional physiotherapy training or practice. It involves examination of an intimate area of the body and the reasons for doing it might not be clear. You may even have concerns that testing perianal sensation could result in a complaint or litigation. So the aim of this video is to improve confidence in testing perianal sensation. We're going to provide some background information on the purpose of testing, the consenting process, the test itself, and then documentation around it. And now obviously the, there are limitations with a short video um, on social media. So if you do feel that you need further training, discuss your concerns with your workplace supervisor. Um, and possibly even if you have concerns about the litigation side of things, you could speak to a legal representative from your trust for their advice. So first of all, the purpose of testing. Perianal sensation testing is not sensitive enough to rely on to rule out corda equina syndrome. Therefore, if corda equina syndrome is suspected, then MRI is indicated regardless of the result of perianal testing perianal sensation testing. However, perianal sensation testing contributes to the overall clinical picture like other dermatomal testing and it may support a case for onward referral. It also provides a documented baseline for comparison if it's retested again in future. And the framework for assessment in primary care recommends that we do perianal sensation testing and frameworks are often used as a benchmark for scrutiny in cases of alleged malpractice. So they're worth following from that perspective as well as clinically. But you do need to ensure that you're working in a suitable environment. You must have a chaperone present and you need to gain explicit consent from your patient. So the next question is, how do we have conversations around that? Decisions about whether to test perianal sensation should be made collaboratively with your patient, which means that patients should be fully informed about the test and its purpose, and should have the opportunity to accept or to decline testing. The test is less invasive than many routine healthcare appointments like smear tests, 
prostate exams and STI testing, although I appreciate your patient may not be expecting to have that kind of test when they come for their physio appointment. Uh, but we need to respect that different patients might have different perceptions about how much of an invasion of privacy the test represents. And this, in combination with your description of the test and its purpose, should facilitate a joint decision about whether or not to perform the test. Make sure you have a chaperone present for as much of the consenting process as possible. So you might want to have that initial conversation just with your patient. But then if you decide to do the test, you bring the chaperone in and recap the consenting process prior to doing the test. Now, with respect to the physical logistics of the test itself, do have a chaperone present and preferably the same sex as the patient. Make sure you explain things to your patients step by step as you go. The sideline is usually the easiest position for access and if you get them to bring their top leg forward slightly it helps to expose the area. And then if you can ask the patient to pull the back of their underwear down to their gluteal fold then the patient doing that themselves helps contribute to the consent process. Make sure you wear gloves and you can then lift the top buttock to view the perianal area. And then we need to do the sensation testing itself. So to understand what we're testing, I've put this diagram up on the right hand side, which shows the areas of the sacral dermatomes. So like the lumbar nerve roots supply areas of skin in your legs, the sacral nerve roots supply areas of skin around your anus and your back and your buttocks. Um, and the sacral nerve roots sit right in the back of your lumbar spine, so you need a big disbulge or severe stenosis, for example, to cause compression of a sacral nerve root. Um, sacral nerves are also the nerves which supply your bladder and bowel function, so that's the other reason that they're so important. So starting close to the anus and working out, you can test the sensation of the left and right sacral der dermatomes, which is the perianal area and the buttocks to light touch using a gloved finger. Do not test anterior genital sensation. If neurotips are available, you could also test pinprick sensation. And then documentation. So documentation is important to record your findings for future reference. And it's also important to protect your organization from a medical legal perspective. As it says in the framework, if perianal sensation testing is not objectively tested, then the reason should be clearly documented. For example, no chaperone present, or if you didn't have a private room, or if the patient didn't consent to having the test. Make sure you document discussions around consent and that a chaperone was present for the consenting process. Document that you were in a private room and the name of the chaperone present and obviously document your assessment findings. I've put all of that into a summary flow diagram um, on the recommendation of one of our physios. Um, so just to recap, ensure that you're in an appropriate environment, discuss the test and its purpose with your patient, then make a joint decision, recap consent with the chaperone present, and explain as you go, as you do the test in side lying, wear gloves and test sensation of the perianal area and buttocks to light touch plus or minus pinprick and then make sure you document as per these bullet points here. Um, I'll post a higher resolution version of this below if you want to save it or to print it out. And the other thing that I'd really recommend is offering yourself as a chaperone. I think it helps you to see how the process goes um, and also helps to desensitise you to the sensitive nature of perianal sensation testing. Um, I hope this video was useful in combination with that and thank you for watching.